In this video, we're going to talk about how to identify a common failure mode of common emitter amplifiers, forcing the transistor out of the forward active region. When the transistor leaves the forward active region, our small signal model fails because it was derived presuming forward active operation of the transistor. Um, this will result in a nonlinear transformation of our sinusoidal input, um, which is called clipping. I've shown an image of a clipped sine wave at the bottom of this slide. Um, in the clipped uh, wave, we can see that our output is no longer able to attract our input, which is presumed to be sinusoidal, um, and instead flattens out at these high and low values in the peaks and the troughs. Um, this flattening is because the transistor is either cutting off or saturating. Um, clipping at VCC, so this upper value, can be conceived of as a pretty pedestrian problem. Our voltage obviously can't go outside the voltage rails that supply our amplifier. However, there are subtleties involved in this clipping behavior. Um, for example, why isn't this low clipping level at ground? Uh, what's stopping the voltage from going lower? We're going to make this circuit a little more concrete to start imagining what's going on. Let's assume VCC is 10 volts, IC is 1 milliamp, RE is 2 kilo ohms, and RC is 4 kilo ohms. We can then calculate the large signal voltages at a few important nodes. The large signal output voltage is given by VCC minus IC RC, which is 6 volts because um, 1 milliamp times 4 kilo ohms is 4 volts. The large signal emitter voltage is given by ICRC, which is 2 volts. We're assuming IC is about the same as IE to make that last calculation. Um, so if IC is 1 milliamp, IE is 1 milliamp, and 1 milliamp times 2 kilo ohms is 2 volts. However, wiggling our base around will cause small signal changes to be superimposed on the large signal collector at the output. That means the total signal V out moves around. Um, sort of, you can imagine it increasing and decreasing uh, as a sinusoid here. Um, so if the total signal V out increases by 4 volts, which happens when the base is decreased by some amount, depending on the gain, then we can calculate the instantaneous collector current to be zero because um, V out is uh, given by VCC minus ICRC um, as a total signal equation in addition to a large signal equation. So IC has to be zero when total signal V out is equal to VCC. However, the only time we have no current in our collector is when our transistor is cut off. So decreasing IC to zero milliamp means the transistor has been forced to enter the cutoff region and trying to increase our voltage further doesn't work because a cutoff transistor won't respond to further decreases in VBE. We call the maximum voltage our transistor can achieve VO max, and VO max is equal to VCC in this example. Um, that's the usually the case in NPN amplifiers where VO max is VCC. However, um, that's a theoretical value for VO max, and you'll find that the actual maximum voltage you can achieve is a bit shy of VCC in practice, because BJTs act a bit weird at very low current levels. We'll talk a little more about that in the next slide, uh, in the next video. Um, so you should make sure to give yourself an additional volt or two of safety margin on your upward voltage swing in your designs. On the other hand, decreasing V out implies that IC has increased. So uh, we don't have to worry about cutting off the transistor as V out goes lower. However, if V out reaches 2.2 volts, so uh, one VCE sat above our emitter voltage, then we no longer have VCE sat across the transistor, which causes it to enter the saturation region. Um, this minimum acceptable voltage of 2.2 volts uh, we call the uh, minimum output voltage or VO min. Um, and you'll note that VO min is 3.8 volts below our large signal V out of 6 volts.
We can summarize these two behaviors by defining a new amplifier design spec specification called the output voltage swing, or VSW. The swing depends on the large signal output voltage and its distance from both the maximum and minimum large signal output voltages. Um, so specifically, the voltage swing captures the size of the the peak to peak size of the largest wave you could have at your output without leaving forward active. That peak to peak size is going to be given by twice the distance from the large signal output voltage to the closer of VO max or VO min. For instance, in our example, V out can travel upwards by 4 volts before cutoff, but only 3.8 volts downwards before saturation. Therefore, V swing would be 2 times 3.8, or 7.6 volts. Note that V swing is a large signal calculation. I've been using large signal notation for it throughout. It only depends on large signal voltages in the circuit. Um, however, uh, Calculating V-swing as a large signal value is a bit funny because large signal voltages never change. Um, so there's an inherent tension here because we're talking about how our output voltage is changing to force our transistor into cutoff or saturation, but large signal values don't move around. Um, we can still uh, Treat this as a large signal calculation, though, because finding VO max and VO min are sort of implicitly acknowledging that your total signal output voltage is moving around enough to force the transistor into other regions of operation. So even though we call V-swing a large signal property, it only exists because we know there's a small signal superimposed on the large signal V-out. So in summary, common emitter output signals clip if they're too high or too low. Clipping happens when the transistor leaves the forward active region. The maximum output voltage where the transistor is in the forward active region is VO max, and the smallest output voltage where the transistor is in the forward active region is VO min, and you have to find those values from circuit analysis. Um, and the output voltage V swing is an important amplifier specification that compares VO max and VO min to our large signal VO and then doubles the smaller of those to indicate the largest peak-to-peak -peak signal that we could have running in our circuit.